We're very excited about this uh, alliance with Jack B. We've invested a lot over the last couple of years of making web service web services available to extract and, and use all the data that's that's in our server or in our, our machine cloud. And uh, two, two things on, on this Jackby relationship. One is, uh, in this demo that they built, they did in a couple days, they mapped uh, these visual objects to all our, our web services and allow, allows a developer now to kind of drag and drop and build these portals and, and, and dashboards. So that's one thing, just productivity, uh, for your developer teams and also the skill sets that you need. Once the mapping is done now, uh, business analysts almost can go ahead and build a lot of the, these dashboards. The second thing is we see a big trend around portals and the need to mash up data from other sources you may have in your enterprise, right? We showed a couple screenshots there of data coming from maybe your, your ticket system or your CRM system or maybe your field service scheduling maintenance system or whatever. And this is a tool that allows you to mash up even data from uh, the weather forecasting system. Okay, we're halfway there. So let's moving on. Self-healing is the, the fifth attribute here. Uh, what's driving this is machines just have to be up. They're more valuable and profitable for the machine makers when they're, and the users when they're up and, and running. And what we're seeing more and more, and Audi would talk this in a second, is just sensors being uh, added or engineered directly into machines and assets, right? There's sensors out there, temperature, infrared, vibration, battery level, sound, et cetera. And then these sensors can uh, go ahead and, and call home. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, they may change the frequency or the power they're generating or something that in self adjusts or they may schedule a field service visit. Uh, if something's physically broken, then they're, they're probably not exactly self healing. Although I saw Andrew's thing on the robots on 60 Minutes and maybe there will be a robot there that can pull up and actually take out a screwdriver and repair it and, 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 and heal itself. So who knows, but the point here is that we'll be able to do more kind of predictive, preventive type maintenance. In fact, Audi uh, want, wanted you to tell a little bit about what you're doing around some of the data you're tracking there around this area. Okay. So um, as I said, the second thing I think uh, was key for, for our success of our system uh, was not only looking at you know, doing the remote desktop login when something's broken. That's a very reactive type of service approach. But we're collecting more than 300 data items and a data item, if you're familiar with the Exceda platform, th that's really sensor data. That's analog data coming from different sensors on the equipment. So we're collecting um, more than 300 of those data items per engine. And then what we do with that data is not only retroactively look back at you know, what was happening and, and what broke and so forth, but also to do uh, predictive analytics. So actually looking at that data as it's coming in through the pipe and doing number crunching on it. And we've developed a few analytics over the last uh, year and a half. Uh, one is to predict uh, generator uh, faults, generator bearing faults. So as the generator bear, uh, bearings wear unpredictably, we can detect a fault before um, it actually crashes that generator rotor. Um, also, we're working on uh, cylinder head uh, analytics. So looking at uh, exhaust gas temperatures and then predicting the valve wear and whether or not the valve is going to break or the valve seat is, is wearing out. Um, also intake health. So this is you know the, the turbocharger and the air intake going into the engine and when the, the turbocharger needs to be cleaned or replaced. Um, and we're also running a predictive analytic um, on spark plug life. So looking at the um, ignition voltages of, of the plugs in each of the cylinders and figuring out how long those spark pl plugs are gonna stay alive. And I mean, if you've ever changed the plug on your car, it's no big deal, right? It's, it's maybe $5 for the whole kit. Well, these plugs are you know, two to $500 a piece. So this is a lot of uh, cost savings for us um, as those uh, engines that we have under service contracts, we actually buy those plugs. So if we can save a few hours and optimize the hours on those plugs, that's real direct savings to us. And that what we're looking at uh, in the future is uh, doing maintenance planning. Um, so now we have, we've got about five and a half terabytes of data we've collected over a year and a half. So now we've got a good profile of the engines and we can start looking at how the customers are using those engines. So then we can forecast what the intervals of maintenance are gonna be and optimize and stretch those intervals out. So uh, here we are, sixth one is, is integrated. Again, there are some of you uh, who are already doing some of this, right? This is about 
using machine data and business systems you already have, right? ERP, CRM, PLM, or maybe a, a data warehouse. The business drivers here is really around getting more accurate data and real-time data, right? Today, a lot of the uh, data that's the machines that are configured, you set up, change after they leave the manufacturing floor. You don't even actually know how they're being set up and used. It'd be great if you can go ahead and sync up how the, it was set up uh, and then when spare parts go in, you lose track of that. It would be great if you can synchronize configurations and, and replacements back with your you know, bill of materials and to do recalls and, and things like that. There's also manual processes where people are actually trying to plug in data around how these systems are being used. It'd be great if that could be populated um, automatically. The usage conf uh, on the last bullet, machine as a service, is kind of a, a name I give, the notion of pay as you go, right? Instead of buying a piece of equipment, you go ahead and um, pay based on its usage, and we invoice you monthly based on these usage usage reports. So, um, Adi, why don't you comment a little bit about some of the integrations or how the use of machine data has worked its way uh, into some of your systems? Okay. So, um, the slide we have here it talks about the different parts of our service business, right? Everywhere from commissioning the engine, so installing the engine, all the way through the end of life of the engine. And we've got a couple touch points here that uh, we feel that uh, the data that we're collecting through the, the remote system um, is valuable to those processes and how we can integrate that into the process, starting from the commissioning. So, so right now, believe it or not, when um, a technician goes out there to install an engine, he sits there and starts up the engine and he writes down on a piece of paper all the parameters that are coming out of the control system. So physically writing on a piece of paper the, the, the digital data that's coming off the control system. And it, it, it's a bit of a challenge to work into that organization and get that organization to change to say, look, you know, if you plug that engine in at the time of con commissioning, you just turn it on and we got the data. You don't have to write anything down. Um, so <laughs> it's a challenge on the, on the uh, momentum of that, I would say. Um, but that actually then makes our install base more accurate, right? So we know what the serial number of that engine is, first of all. And then we have all the baseline data about that engine. And then we get into the contractual business, so the SLAs and so forth. And um, the data actually helps us to manage um, the, both the contract and the warranty. So we know how the customers are running the engines, whether or not they've exceeded their terms and conditions of the contract and uh, whether or not we're liable for any LAs um, if they've uh, abused that. Um, training, uh, we don't actually have any plans right now for, for that with the analytics. Uh, remote monitoring, okay, this is where we actually started the project, right? So for years, we had been connecting engines through VPNs and modems, um, and when we implemented the Exceda technology, then we have a really proactive uh, monitoring system. So we have help desks, and I think that's really important. We have some partners that are just setting up help desks because they've been operating out of field tech so far. Um, so they've realized the value of setting up help desk, and that allows you to pre-qualify um, uh, errors that are coming in. So a customer calls, and you can have your, your core knowledge team sitting you know, in, a, in a core center to diagnose a problem, uh, identify where it is, potentially fix it online. So even our, our engines, which are very mechanical based, right? We've achieved uh, a 53% fix rate remotely. So we can fix a problem without even sending a technician 53% of the time. Um, and then if we do need to send a technician, then we can send the right technician, we can send him with the right tools, and we can send him with the right parts. So he only has to go out there once, and then you have a higher first time fix rate. Um, and spare parts and upgrades and overhaul, um, you know, I can see a, a great value in tying this in with our, our logistics system. To be honest, we haven't gotten there yet. We've got a lot of work we're doing. Um, I would like to do it in one year, but uh, with a large organization, it's hard to get everything aligned. Uh, but um, there is a lot of potential also in the spare parts and logistics planning prediction. I'm just glad you don't have everything done because then it wouldn't be the machine of the future, it'd be the machine of the present and you, we already have everything. Like the other slide, yeah. So, okay, we're, uh, let's see, we're up to three, six, seven, app-centric. So I think this one is, is pretty obvious. I think the best example of this is this machine in my hand. I guess it's a machine. 
right, which is the phone, right? It's less about hardware these days. It's just as much about the apps that come with the piece of hardware, right? It's the iCloud, iTunes, App Store. Um, with the vehicle commercials you see these days, it's just about um, as much about the media, the connectivity, OnStar, access to the navigation, uh, maps and all those things, right? That's the way people are starting to differentiate their machines, right? Extending that machine with a web portal, a tablet, a smartphone application, and allowing two-way communication uh, between the two. Um, it's a way to differentiate yourselves in the industry. It's a way to improve, uh, you know, customer the, the customer uh, experience. Um, so it's not just a B B to C phenomenon for sure. It's even B to B. Here's a very in getting us here today, and thank you for this example. Uh, a longtime customer, actually a few years ago, used uh, imp originally implemented Exceda to connect their sterilization equipment. Think these commercial dishwashers in hospitals, and to provide diagnostics and remote service to these things. We quickly realized that they were uh, this machine data would also be valuable to the end user, and they you can see on the far right there in the tech room looking at this TV screen of the active jobs of, you know, typically 10, 20 machines running maybe in a large hospital. They can see the status of those, or they can log into a, a couple years ago, they built this web portal, they call it Getting Online, where you can drill down and look at the status, message logs, but even drill down to the consumable levels, detergent levels in that machine and see if they need to be replenished. You can go ahead and order. And then most recently they added a, a smartphone application where uh, a lot of the work was done at the end of the day. They would load these machines up and literally the workers had to stick around, sometimes just babysit them. Now they can go ahead and, and go home and uh, for that one time of the year, maybe where something fails, you know, they'll, they'll get a message and they'll see the status on their smartphone and can go back in and, and rerun the job, right? So I can imagine now when the getting a sales force is out there uh, selling and marketing, it's just as much about this user experience and these apps as it is how clean the stuff coming out of their, their sterilization equipment is, right? Um, we'll see more and more of that. Okay, we're getting down to the final two here. Uh, of course, we have to have something around greenness, right? And there's a big green movement, but in, in, there's also regulations coming out, especially for our, our customers and prospects here from Europe. Uh, they're further along in kind of mandating the output, the CO output and energy usage that, and energy consumption. So I would expect over time that this will be easier and easier to do because machine manufacturers will build in the hooks to monitor the uh, exhaust output like Audi talked about in his generators or to manage the energy usage in machines. Uh, in fact, we see uh, our partner Wipro has a very big practice around working with enterprises around getting their energy bills down. In fact, Best Buy is a great testimonial. We're there working with um, obviously these gigantic stores between lighting, HVAC, and all those electronics electronics running um, require a lot of power and makes sense that you know there's some management you can do remotely to make sure they're, they're properly um, turning them on and off and adjusting them. So uh, a, a great example there. Okay, last one is collaborative. So this is about machine data making its way beyond the en enterprise, right? Beyond your company's walls, but starting to share it with with other apps, other system, other stakeholders, partners, think connected farms, hospitals, uh, things like that. 